Hello future programmers, welcome to our channel. Today, we're about to embark on an exciting journey into the captivating realm of programming. This is the world where you get to instruct machines to perform tasks, design intricate websites, or even develop your very own apps. So what exactly is programming? Think of it as crafting a detailed recipe for your computer to follow. It's all about creating a sequence of instructions that guide a computer in accomplishing a specific task. Now, these instructions are written in a language your computer understands. We call these programming languages. Some of the popular ones are Python, JavaScript, and C++. Each of these languages has its own set of rules and syntax, just like the grammar and vocabulary in spoken languages. In this journey, we'll be using Python as our tool of choice. Known for its simplicity and readability, Python is the perfect starting point for beginners. Let's explore these through Python, known for its readability and simplicity, perfect for beginners. Let's write a classic Hello World program in Python. This time-honored tradition for newbie coders is more than just a greeting to the coding universe. It's a simple, yet profound introduction to the structure and syntax of any new language you're learning. So, what's syntax, you ask? Well, syntax is like the grammar of a programming language. It's the set of rules that determines how programs written in the language should be structured. So, without further ado, let's dive into our first Python program. Type print, hello world, and run the code. Voila! You've just told your computer to display the text, hello world, on the screen. This simple line of code is your first step into the programming world. In this one line of code, you've already encountered two fundamental concepts, syntax and functions. Here, print, is a function, a reusable piece of code that performs a specific task. It's your first step into the programming world. Next up, let's talk about variables and data types. Think of variables as the storage boxes of the programming world. They hold the data we need to use and manipulate in our programs. You can store a wide range of data types in these boxes, from numbers and text to more complex types, like lists and dictionaries. Data types are essentially the kind of data a variable can hold. If you're familiar with different kinds of containers in real life, you'll understand this concept easily. Just like a mug is used for liquids and a bookshelf for books, different data types are stored in different variables. Now let's move on to how we can create and use variables in Python. Python makes it really simple. If you want to create a variable called name and assign it the value Alex, you would write name equal sign Alex. That's it. You've just created your first variable. Once you have a variable, you can use it in your program. Let's say you want to print the value of name on the screen. You'd simply write print name and Alex would appear on the screen when you run your program. It's like magic, but better because you're the magician. But remember, variables aren't just for storing text they can hold different types of data. If you want to store the number 25 in a variable called age, you'd write age equals sign 25. Now, age holds the number 25. You might be wondering why we're spending time on something that seems so simple. Well, that's because understanding variables and data types is crucial to programming. They're the building blocks of your programs. Without them, you wouldn't be able to store or manipulate data which is what most programs are all about. Think about it. A calculator program needs to store the numbers you're adding. A text editor needs to store the text you're writing. A game needs to store the score you're racking up. All of this is done using variables and data types. So, as you go forth on your programming journey, remember, variables are your friends. They hold your data. They help you manipulate it and they make your programs come to life. Understanding variables and data types is crucial, as they are the building blocks of programming. Programming isn't just about executing instructions in order. Sometimes you need to make decisions or repeat actions. That's where our dynamic duo comes in, the IVE statements and loops. These control structures are like the steering wheel and accelerator of your code, giving you control over the flow of execution. So, let's dive into the world of if statements first. Imagine you're writing a program for a smart home system. It's a sunny day, and you want your smart blinds to open. But if it's raining, you'd rather they stay closed. 
How do you tell your program to make this decision? Enter the if statement. In Python, this might look something like, if it's sunny, then open the blinds, else close the blinds. Now let's move on to loops. Suppose you're creating a countdown timer. You need to print the numbers from 10 to 1. You could write 10 separate print statements, but that's time consuming and repetitive. Instead, you can use a loop. In Python, A for loop does this beautifully. You simply tell Python, for each number in the range 10 to 1, print the number. And just like that, you have your countdown. But loops aren't just for counting down. You can use them for repeating any action a certain number of times, or even indefinitely until a certain condition is met. They're like the repeat button on your music player, but for code. But why are we even talking about control structures? Well, imagine trying to navigate a city without being able to steer or accelerate your car. It would be a straight, unchanging path. That's what programming would be like without, if statements and loops. They add logic and flexibility to your programs, making your code smarter, more efficient, and capable of handling more complex tasks. So remember, if statements are your program's decision makers, and loops are its repeaters. Master these, and you'll have a solid foundation for your journey into the vast, fascinating world of programming. These structures add logic and flexibility to your programs, enabling them to handle more complex tasks. As your programs grow, you'll find yourself needing to reuse code. Here's where functions come into play. Think of functions like a favorite recipe. You wouldn't want to write down the entire recipe every time you want to make it, right? Instead, you have it neatly written down once, and you refer to it whenever you need it. Functions in programming work the same way. They allow you to encapsulate, or wrap up, blocks of code into reusable units. Functions are a fundamental concept in Python and most other programming languages. They're like mini-programs within your main program, performing specific tasks. They can take inputs, known as arguments, perform actions, and return outputs. For instance, let's say we want to create a function that adds two numbers. In Python, we would define it like this. Def add numbers, a, b, return a plus b, def is short for define, add underscore numbers, is the name of our function, and a and b are our arguments. The colon signals the start of our function, and the return keyword tells Python what result we want the function to give back when it's called. Now, every time we want to add two numbers, we don't need to write out the addition operation. We just call our function with the two numbers we want to add, like so, add numbers, 5, 3. The function takes 5 and 3 as inputs, adds them, and returns 8. But functions are not just about performing calculations. They can be used to encapsulate any block of code you find yourself using repeatedly, from printing messages to processing data. The beauty of functions is that they make your code more readable, more organized, and easier to maintain. If you need to change how a task is performed, you only have to change the code in one place, the function, instead of hunting down every instance of that task in your code. In a nutshell, functions are essential for writing efficient, reusable code. They're like your personal coding toolbox, ready to help you tackle any task with the right tool. So, there we have it. You've taken your first steps into the world of programming. Let's take a moment to revisit the key points from our journey today. We began by understanding the basics of programming. It's all about creating a set of instructions for your computer to follow, very much like writing a recipe. We learned that every program is written in a specific programming language, each with its own syntax and rules. And we used Python as our language of choice for its simplicity and readability. We then dove right in and wrote our first program, the classic Hello World. This simple line of code introduced us to two fundamental concepts, syntax and functions. Syntax is the set of rules that define valid combinations of symbols in a language, and functions are tasks that the program can execute. Next, we explored variables and data types. We likened variables to containers that store data values, and data types to labels that tell us what kind of data a variable can hold. We learned how to create a variable in Python, and how to display its value. We then navigated the world of control structures, specifically if statements and loops. 
These structures allow your programs to make decisions based on conditions and repeat actions, adding logic and flexibility to your code. Finally, we looked at functions, which allow us to encapsulate blocks of code into reusable units. Functions can take inputs, perform actions and return outputs, making them a powerful tool for efficient programming. So, that's the nutshell version of our journey today. Remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to learn, and the best way to learn programming is by doing it. So roll up your sleeves and start coding. Remember, programming is a journey, and every journey begins with a single step. Keep practicing, and soon you'll be writing your own programs. See you in the next video. This is the world where you get to instruct machines to perform tasks, design intricate websites, or even develop your very own apps.